It's United Nations World Health Day, which will be held on Sunday, April 7. B acknowledges the commitment that the Marshall Liberal Government has to healthcare in South Australia, particularly regional South Australia. C welcomes the commitment to address the backlog of capital works in regional hospitals and the efforts to address the shortage of regional healthcare professionals. And D condemns the former Labor Government's transforming health program and the dire situation in which it has left healthcare in South Australia. It's uh, with great hope that I move this motion, Mr Speaker, in hoping that I get support from both sides of the House. And now that those opposite have been relegated to the opposition benches, they can see the folly of their ways and support this motion and its intent and acknowledge the mess that it has left this state in. Since becoming the member for Narunga, regional health services and the importance of improving and maintaining them has been the number one topic that I have been contacted about most, and I feel mo most compelled to make a difference to the constituents I represent and the towns and communities that they live in. And as well as that, their whole populations which rely on the delivery of appropriate levels of health service. Regions that cannot provide reliable, adequate health services and hospitals will die because it is an undisputed fact that families, retirees, the elderly, all age groups will choose not to live where they cannot confidently access the health services that they need. They will choose to move to where they can see that they will receive the care when they need it, and with such population shifts come sub subsequent small business closures, job losses, school closures, loss of services across the board and spiralling economic and social consequences. So with this motion, which acknowledges World Health Day and the value of quality health care provision across the world, I highlight the value, in particular, of investment in regional health services. I wish to commence with the good news, Mr Speaker, that inroads are being made into the significant capital works and maintenance backlog in the country hospitals left to spiral out of control by the previous city-centric Labor government to the tune of about $150 million. Recently, it was announced a $2.7 million upgrade of the Snowtown Hospital's Lamia Homes aged care facility to meet fire, compliance, uh, fire safety compliance sorry, and to replace roofing, a significant investment in a town that is heavily reliant on its hospital and its aged care facility. When I had toured there last August, the Director of Nursing, Andrew Dolby, showed me specific areas of need and we discussed the roof and what needed to be done as a priority. The $2.7 million investment comes from the assets sustainment program created by the Marshall Liberal Government when it came to office, providing an additional $14 million per annum for the next 10 years to significantly improve country, country hospital infrastructure and to undertake urgent upgrades such as the Snowtown Hospital Lamia Homes project, which is, which is expected to start this year and be completed in the next. This new fund has also ensured that other urgent maintenance at hosp multiple hospitals in the Narunga electorate is now being addressed, scheduled for completion this year. These projects include a new generator and elect electrical switchboard for the Wallaroo Hospital, construction of the central sterile supply department at Yorktown Hospital, and telephone and nurse call bell upgrades at Yorktown, Maitland, Wallaroo and Port Broughton Hospitals, as well as at, Mal as well as at Malaluka Court Nursing Home in Midleton. The Marshall Liberal Government understands how crucial it is that health services are maintained in country areas, and whilst there is a huge backlog of works to do, we're getting on with the job. There is much to be done, and a good, and a good start has been the provision of $720,000 for the Ardrossan Community Hospital and $750,000 for Yorktown Hospital, the latter to reinstate services removed in 2016 due to the hospital not being able to meet its theatre standards due to a lack of maintenance by the former government. This government understands the crucial need for ongoing maintenance for service retention and also the need for action to address GP staffing shortages across rural South Australia, which is impacting on service provision. The dire need for improvements to regional health care was one of the driving forces behind the, my decision to contest the state election to represent the seat of Narunga. That hasn't changed, Mr Speaker, and providing enough health care professionals to service our electorate is a vital part of that. To that end, the Liberal government has developed a policy platform designed to increase the representation of rural GPs, registered midwives and other health professionals to provide vital services. We have committed $20 million directly into country health to fill skill gaps and attract specialists 
to help address the recognised ongoing medical staffing shortages in our regions. The decision last October by Kadena Medical Associates to withdraw from the Wallaroo Hospital Emergency Department on-call roster was not a shock. What should be more of a surprise is how long the hard-working Kadena Medical Associates GPs were able to continue to be the sole provider supporting the Wallaroo Hospital after the withdrawal from the roster in the last 18 to 24 months from, uh, of both the Wallaroo and Moonta medical practices. Such unacceptable workloads are doing nothing to attract and retain GPs in our electorate and across regional SA. And the outcomes are urgent from the policy work that has been underway for many months to address this issue. The $20 million from the state Liberal government plan to address GP skill shortages includes doubling the number of medical interns in the uh, country areas, allocating teaching hospital funding to country LHNs to enable those LHNs to negotiate cooperative shared training arrangements with metro LHNs, supporting recruitment and retention of resident specialists in country SA through the engagement of interns, registrars and medical officers with specialist skills, developing registered nurse midwife collaborative graduate programs in regional, rural and remote South Australia, encouraging rural and remote registered midwives to undertake training for dual registration, uh, ensuring that the ambulance accommodates the changing ambulance service accommodates the changing employment and volunteering patterns in rural and regional areas, and strengthening the Aboriginal health worker and allied health professional training opportunities across rural and remote SA. I believe the impending rollout of the Marshall Liberal Government's new local health network governing boards will make a difference. Just by decentralising the system and putting real responsibility and accountability back in the hands of local board members. Our doctors, nurses and allied health staff are under great pressure and the passage of our health care pardon me, our health care governance amendment bill last year will mean they won't have more pressure imposed by a remote head office out of touch with local needs and challenges specific to regional areas. It has been well documented that in the last ten years of labour, SA Health's head office staff was doubled, growing four times faster than our nursing workforce and this excessive bureaucracy resulted in budget blowouts and poor project management. The cost of their transforming health plan has been put at at least $200 million, and that bill came with the reductions in services that the Marshall Liberal Government is now having to spend more money to put back on. The Marshall Liberal Government last month unveiled the final concept plan for a reopened REPAT health precinct with state-of-the-art services to care for brain and spinal rehabilitation patients and older mental health and dementia patients to be the focus of the site. The former Labor government closed the REPAC in 2015 after promising that they would never ever do so and left the people, with, the people of uh, surrounding areas without that service and set about selling the site. Thankfully, we were able to secure it as a public asset by terminating the sale contract two months after the March 2019 election. Health professionals and people at the coalface are now being listened to, and I can attest they are also being heard when assessing needs for country hospitals long neglected uh, that are now requiring urgent high-risk repairs and maintenance. Under the new uh, local health network governing boards to commence in July, real responsibility and accountability will be put back at the local level and will provide strengthened oversight and improve patient safety. The new health governance measures legislated by the Marshall Liberal Government ensures money raised in local communities is spent in local communities, that local bequests and private donations go to where they have been pledged and in doing so restore faith and connection between communities and governance, that more regional and rural hospitals won't lose services and be downgraded. In absolute frustration over the last 10 years, communities have become increasingly despondent about having no voice. It is believed local communities lost decision-making authority over the 42 country hospitals across SA when the previous government removed their management boards. In their stead, hacks were designed to be the local voice for the minister, but they were described as toothless tigers without directives on how to act, without clear lines of communication and with no say on how funds they raise are allocated. I heard the concerns firsthand, Mr Deputy Speaker. Locals wanting to donate to their hospital have not been sure of where their money would go. Dr Max Van Dissel of the Kapunda Health Advisory Council lamented that in 2016-17, two applications were made to use its fundraising to purchase a steriliser and an operating microscope 
the local clinicians deemed essential, but both applications were knocked back by the minister. Another doctor from the New Rio Medical Centre, Dr Michael Hoopman, despaired publicly over the many battles faced by local doctors, which he listed as including outdated facilities, the winding down of services such as obstet obstetrics and the lack of support patients who are experiencing mental illnesses receive. He said he's been in the Barossa for 25 years and that numbers at the hospital have halved. At a public meeting in Corn in March 2017, local doctor Tony Leanne Lloyd addressed the packed town hall describing the loss of the lifeblood of many small townships, the local hospital. They were diminished by stealth, threatening the economic viability of rural doctors and, by extension, service delivery to patients. Of note were the supporting medical professionals who travelled from all over the state that night to attend. From Mount Gambia, Robe, Kimber, the Barossa, Borough, Cleve, Port Broughton, Butte, Maitland, Kadena, and local mayors and members of the Rural Doctors Association and the Nurses Midwifery Association. We are committed, Mr Deputy Speaker, to fixing a broken health system. Patients in the Narungra electorate are often disadvantaged by distance and challenges in accessing doctor and specialist attention. Um, accessing doctor and specialist attention. But they, just like their city councils, are entitled to fair access to health services. Regional areas cannot afford to lose any more services. Retaining health services is at the top of the list of concerns for locals, and it is what I hear about most. Our increasing and ageing population needs the state government to invest in its services. Since the Marshall Liberal Government came to office in March 2018, regional health services have been significantly improved and our communities in the, Narung in the Narunga electorate have been reassured by the evidence they've seen that regional health care matters to this government. Yes, the workload ahead to improve health services across metropolitan and regional South Australia is enormous. Such has been the damage done by the previous government and transforming health. To be able to provide uh, adequate, affordable health care and services is the goal of states and countries across the world, and we are all facing challenges. The World Health Organisation's World Health Day is being celebrated on 7 April 2019, and the focus this year is universal health coverage. The campaign organisers state that the key to achieving universal health coverage is ensuring that everyone can obtain the care they need when they need it right in the heart of the community. The World Health Organisation says, and I quote from their website, progress is being made in countries in all regions of the world, but millions of people still have no access to health care. Millions of more are forced to choose between health care and other daily expenses such as food, clothing and even a home. The World Health Organisation does clarify that universal health care does not mean free coverage for all possible health interventions, regardless of cost, as no country can provide all services free of charge on a sustainable basis. I take this opportunity in marking World Health Day to recognise the vital role of this state's health sector and its extensive workforce of doctors, nurses, specialists and paramedics, everyone who works in the healthcare setting in any capacity, and also commend all within the World Health Organisation for their dedicated effort to progress health standards and service provisions around the world, a vital contribution indeed. I'd also like to acknowledge the Minister for Health who's doing a mighty job in his new role and contributing a great deal to regional health care. I've been honoured to host him in our electorate a couple of times and one almost immediately after the election when he visited the Wallery Hospital straight away. So unlike the previous government whose efforts at transforming health resulted in the closure of hospitals and the winding back of services, this government cares about good health care. I, for one, Mr Speaker, find it ominous that those opposite have installed one of the architects of transforming health as the Shadow Minister for Health. Heaven forbid he ever be the afforded he ever be afforded the opportunity to reconstitute it. I commend the motion to the House. Uh, member for Ghana. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I uh, move an amendment to this motion uh, to delete uh, everything after B uh, and add. B expresses grave concerns over the Liberal government's cuts and privatisation agenda for health including the state 